Earth is a sphere. It most certainly isn't flat. Nathan Oakley combines being stupid. Yes, Earth is indeed obviously and observably flat. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth based variety? You can measure it with a ring laser gyro. Oh, so your claim is that the ring laser gyro is demonstrating a 15 degree deviation of the Earth rotating underneath the fixed frame of the ring laser gyro, is that correct? Well, if the Earth rotates under the fixed frame of a ring laser gyro, then it would also rotate underneath aeroplanes, helicopters, and anything else in the inertial reference frame. So it's not a theory. It's not even a phenomena that you can observe and describe to study. But because it's come into existence as somebody explaining something and then being described to science and then given the label theory of gravity, which is out of date by 106 years, I might add. But nevertheless, because it's been ascribed that title, you would assume, perfectly reasonable because you've been told so, that that's something you need to concern yourself with, the theory of gravity, when in reality there's not even a phenomena to study. There's nothing occurring to study. You can say I pick my keys up and drop them, but the explanation for that is you picking them up and dropping them. So there we go. So I'll ask one more time, what is diffraction? I'll give you 10 seconds, go. What's diffraction? The black swan debunks the Earth as a sphere. If the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 39 59 miles, then every distance to horizon measurement could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. And the distance to the horizon in the black swan imagery is beyond the geometric limitations of an Earth with a sphere radius value 39.59. Therefore, the Earth is not a sphere. WGS 84 or World Geodetic Survey 1984. And this is basically an azimuthal equidistant projection in a sphere of the heavens that's what it is and so far i've not heard any explanations for why we are using the wgs 84 with its flattening factor of almost 100 percent which brings the disc of the azimuthal equidistant projection to 33 kilometers that's the thickness of the world that rumpus thinks he's on with being obnoxious Yes, sorry, it is. Yes, I... Right, I, so I it is done. further around the curve. Yes, I thought you were going to ask about refraction. No, you stupid idiot. My question is phrased well, very carefully. Yeah, this okay, stuff no, no, is no, right. further around the curve, Rumpus, you blithering idiot. Try and pay attention to the question. So you're clearly a moron. You clearly don't understand anything that's going on. What the hell are you doing here? With having sexual preferences in relation to his male adversaries that are rather peculi peculiar for a man who is married and has two children. Get that conclusion is by using R. So let's see it. Then I'll rape you with it. No, it's a straw man, actually. I'm just looking over water. No, it's not a straw man. You've just asserted the obstruction is caused by Earth so. curve. So, dumb fuck, let's see you draw well, that logical connection, like dumb fuck. This is you is being raped. Let me pin you down, Tim. Hold. Let's all hold his arms while I rape him. Yeah, Tim, this is you being raped. Uh, this is you being raped, Tim, and man. you can that's try and weird. rumpus, scream all you like. This is me holding you no, down and inserting really R. It's me inserting your axiom. Yeah, you, you, you squeal, squeal, little piggy. Squeal while I rape you. But most of all, he is stupid. He is a parrot who doesn't think for himself, but blindly repeats what he has heard from his flock of followers. If it sounds even remotely reasonable in his eyes, and most of all, if it confirms his narrative, he learns the keywords by heart and repeats them ad nauseum. His new buzzword is the sextant. 
This is what he has heard about it. Doesn't surprise me. Somebody from the chat, uh, James2, says, what's GP? So on screen you've got this guy, and I don't quite know why the sexton's coming out of his crotch, but it is. Nevertheless, despite the fact that this guy using his dick for a sextant, he's got the angle up to the star. The GP would be the straight line that comes down to meet at 90 degrees to the parallel surface that you're measuring to get a triangle. So you've got a 90 degree triangle, the 90 degree will be here to the GP. So the GP is the position below the star so that you can draw this line as a radius, which would mean that you can draw a circle on your map all the way around the central point of that GP. So the star's position on the ground below where it meets at 90 degrees to your position with this guy's genital sexton. Let's find a different picture. <laughs> Next picture, circle of equal altitude. So in the same depiction that I've just shown you, you had the star and the GP would be on the ground. This would be where the guy was standing, measuring an angle up to it with the GP below it and then any of these lines because you could be at any position when you take your first measurement around this circle so you've got a radius value so you can literally stick a compass into your map and draw a circle and that gives you your area of equal altitude below the gp of the star you might need two you might need three in order to find a position where they cross and that will give you your fix Sexton works on the plane with light at funny angles. I'm sorry, there's <laughs> the one before that. I haven't sent you that one. How Sexton actually works. 90 degrees, the zenith position of a star here, the sun. The GP would be directly underneath. There's your perpendicular. And three sailboats representing where three navigators might be in the angles to that GP. And there would be a circle of equal altitudes for all three. And that baseline has to be flat in order to triangulate. It's got to have a right angle. There's no other way. Shout out to Rob L. He says, the year of the sextant. Well done, tenth man. Yeah, I totally agree. Good, good call out for props. In short, the measured angle with the sextant should be between the line of sight to the star and the horizontal. A sextant works relative to the horizon. On a globe, the horizon drops with distance. So, if navigation using a sextant works all over the world and the Earth is a sphere, then measurements with a sextant would require a correct a correction for the curvature of the earth. Navigation using a sextant works all over the world and sailors don't correct for the curvature of the earth. Therefore the earth cannot be a globe, therefore the earth must be flat. Let's analyze this statement. First of all, it is a non sequitur fallacy. Navigation on a flat earth wouldn't work either without correction because the horizon drops also on a flat earth. And on a flat earth there wouldn't be a crisp horizon in the first place. So let's focus on the first part of the statement. How does a sextant work? A sextant consists basically of a triangle shaped base with a curved bottom. The angle between the two legs is 60 degrees. On the curved bottom you will find an index scale divided in equal parts from 0 to 120 degrees. There is one horizon mirror mounted on the left side and a telescope on the right side. The horizon mirror is split in the middle vertically, the left side is transparent, the right side is a mirror. The telescope is aimed at the horizon mirror. On top there is an index arm mounted that can rotate around the center point of the bottom curve. This is a schematic depiction. In reality, there is, 
there also is a so-called vernier scale mounted that makes a very accurate setting of the index arm possible to an accuracy of one arc minute. Also, there are some filters for looking at the sun. On the index arm is the index mirror mounted. You use the sextant by looking through the telescope and aiming the apparatus at the horizon, using the left part of the horizon mirror. Then you adjust the index arm in such a way that on the right side of the horizon mirror you can see the star, or the sun, or the moon next to the horizon. Then you can read off the angle of the index scale. This is mostly how far flat earthers go when they talk about sextants. And of course every flat earther knows a sailor who claims that they never correct for the curvature of the earth. Or they know someone who knows someone who has heard from a sailor who claims that they never correct for the curvature of the earth. And after repeating this claim enough times, Nathan Oakley picks it up and brings it as being the truth. He hasn't checked it of course, Nathan Oakley never ever checks the information he passed on. And he is not the only one. A simple Google search is too much of an intellectual strain on their singular brain cells. If you put in this Google search term, correction for earth curvature in sextant measurements, you get this very first result, a link to a site called knowledgeofsea.com, a website for professional shipping. And there they explain extensively how you should correct for curvature. In short it goes like this. We have an observer with his eyes at O. He measures with the sextant the angle between the star X, his eyes O, and the visible horizon at C, V. However, what he initially wanted was the sensible angle between the star X, his eye O, and what is called the sensible horizon V, that is a circle whose plane is perpendicular to the local vertical for the observer and passes through the observer's eye. Therefore, he needs to know the dip angle, S2, O, V. There is a very simple rule of thumb to calculate this. The dip angle in arc minutes equals minus 1.7725 times the square root of the eye height in meters. So, the dip angle for an eye height of 10.5 meters will be minus 5.7 arc minutes. The dip angle is always negative. There are tables in use for this calculation. As you see, the given dip angle for 10.5 meters is minus 5.7 arc minutes. However, there is another correction at play here. To be absolutely accurate, you want to know the rational angle between the star X, his eyes O, and what is called the rational horizon R1, that is the plane that passes through the center of the celestial sphere and is perpendicular to the local vertical for the observer. The difference between the sensible and the rational angle is called the parallax angle. This correction is given also in maritime tables, be it only for the moon and the sun. The correction for the moon is the largest, that for the sun is much smaller, and for the stars it is nil. This is due to the close proximity of the moon relative to the sun, and the close proximity of the moon and sun relative to the stars. So, navigation using the sextant works all over the world, and professional sailors do correct for the curvature of the Earth based on a sphere with a radius of 6371 kilometers. The Earth is not flat. You're an idiot! <laughs> and, a and as a little extra, the correction for parallax that is inherent in a proper use of the sextant, or as Nathan Oakley might like to say, it is a necessary antecedent for the sextant to work properly, is based on a moon much closer than the sun, and the sun 
much closer than the stars. And again, navigation with a sextant works, and professional sailors have always used these corrections, so the flat earth model with the sun and the moon at the same distance to the earth must be wrong. And as a cherry on the cake, the whole set of corrections are based on a spherical earth with a radius of 6371 kilometers. And the corrections, which again are necessary for the sextant to properly work, are correct, because navigation using a sextant works all over the world. If the corrections are correct, the radius also must be correct. But the Not issue is... with a hose. You sure would, Cookie. You're full of baloney. The fact that you're a deadbeat. Baloney. You're an idiot. Do you understand how annoying you are? Forget it. Money We're done. Money. Thanks for watching.